And we welcome you to Spartan Stadium in Lima. Looking forward to a huge matchup. It is the Division 5 Region 18 final, and it's a couple of absolute heavyweights set to do battle as the undefeated Tigers of Liberty Center take on the one-loss Cavs of Coldwater. With Miles Holiday, I'm Randy Roberts, partner. Huge matchup tonight, a big one. This is going to be an at this is I have never sat ringside for a big boxing match. I've been ringside for pro wrestling. Come on now. But this is kind of what this feels like all week. This is going to be just an absolute classic. Hey, it is, right? They're almost mirror images of each other. Both communities just <laughs> love football and so tradition rich. So so much they're both wearing orange and black. They are and of course they met last year and they're just great programs and obviously where else would you rather be than right here right now? Great football and I get to do it with the mayor of Northwest Ohio Randy Roberts. A huge matchup here. Liberty at 13 and 0, Coldwater at 12 and 1 and we'll show you how they uh, got into uh, this matchup as we take a look at our uh, bracket for uh, this one. So Liberty with a, a win over Huron and then in the uh, semifinals they moved to the neutral sites. Tigers were able to get a fairly easy win over Ar Oak Harbor in a game played on the east side of Toledo at Clay. Well, for Coldwater, had to go on the road in the second round. You see they're upsetting the third-seeded Blue Streaks of Archibald. They also had a fairly easy time with Edison in their semifinal matchup. Now here they are looking forward to a, a trip to the state semifinals. Yeah, Coldwater, as we had the Archibald game in round one, that was a game for about a half, and Coldwater established their dominance. And uh, you take a look at Liberty Center in the top bracket. Boy, that was an Oak Harbor team that a lot of people thought was going to challenge Liberty Center. Mm -hmm. No, sir. Uh-uh. Liberty Center just did what they have really done all year long, Randy, and it's just run you over. The The rushing game is just amazing here. 5,243 yards is just insane. But uh, this might have everybody talking about the offenses, but take a look at these defenses, man. These defenses are fantastic. You have Liberty Center, Randy, nine times this year, one score or less, and you have uh, Coldwater, their defense, one score or less, seven times this year. Both teams, fantastic on the defense side of the ball. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Coldwater, as we said at the top of our pregame, coming in at 12-1. and one. Let's start with that defense, like you mentioned. They're allowing 153 yards passing per game, but like you said, partner, it's that run defense, 83 yards mm -hmm. a game, going up against a big, potent rushing attack of Liberty Center tonight. Oh, what a great matchup it's going to be, right? Uh, if they're going to stop the run of Liberty Center, it's going to be Cody Depwig, the middle linebacker, defensive player of the year in the MAC. 126 tackles on the year. Now, you remember last year, though, it was inside trap. The 20 and 21 trap of Liberty Center just ate this Coldwater defense up alive. They're going to have to do a better job of defending that. And it's a 3 3 5 defense. So, how are you going to defend a, t a team that likes to go double tight and run wing T? So, it's going to be interesting to see what Mark Bruns, defensive coordinator at Coldwater, comes up with. Yeah, Depwig, also the co defensive player of the year in the district district as the all district teams were announced earlier this week he also gets some help in that second level you see uh miles podcotter there so Depwig 125 and a half tackles podcotter one or 111 and a half and they've combined for about 13 sacks this year yeah and don't forget about jack ebbing also the three linebackers are fantastic and they got a rover buddy that is as good as anybody in the state and Mason Welch. This guy is fantastic. You watch him at practice, Randy. He makes sure they get aligned left to right, no matter what the formation is, gets the defense aligned, and you think, well, he did a great job just doing that. Oh, he also makes great tackles, 93, and he's picked off seven passes this year. Mm -hmm. Not sure he's going to add to that total with interceptions because Liberty Center doesn't throw the ball a great deal, but he is a fantastic football player. Yeah, Welch was first team all district as well, and uh, we get into the Liberty numbers. We talked about that. Let's talk about the offense for Coldwater, throwing the ball for 218 yards a game, running for 136, so about 350-ish yards per game on offense. We saw them in the second round matchup against Archibald, where they came up and uh, put on the display in the second half. And I think the most impressive thing for Coldwater just was the overall speed All that right. they had on offense. Yeah, and when you talk speed, you got to talk about the H-bombs, right? The Harlemant brothers, mm -hmm. Braylon and A.J. Boy, A.J. is just electric with the ball in his hands. 54 catches, 1,159 yards, and 14 TDs out of 54 catches. His brother Braylon, they will use him in the run game and the throw game. 319 yards rushing, 47 catches, but everything works though because of Balin Blockberger, the quarterback, is fantastic. 
64% completion, 2,700 yards, 34 TDs, 12 interceptions. And you remember, a year ago, this was a team that was really beat up by injuries mm -hmm. going against Liberty Center. So they are much healthier, better prepared on the offensive side of the ball. And Blockberger, uh, for his efforts, was named first team all district. And the team or the teams that were uh, that were announced earlier this week, I know what I'm trying to say. Up front, they get a second team all district player. Kale Wenning is going to lead that offensive line. Yeah, Kale Wenning's as good as anybody you're going to see snapping the football. He was a first team all MAC player, and he is a guy that really leads this offense not the biggest offensive line you're going to see but they have that one important thing right want to you got to want to block and they do a great job of wanting to block let's take a look now at the uh, tigers of uh, liberty center and boy do they run the football 322 yards a game and led by uh, two of the cruise triplets each over a thousand yards the first team all district performer in colton cruz and his brother trenton yeah, you know how rare it is to have two thousand yard rushers in a team it's only happened three times in the nfl so that that is extremely rare, but now at Liberty Center, they love to run the football, but the thing that has really stabilized this team, I believe, is Landon Amstutz. When he took over at quarterback about week five, things seemed to kind of really fall in place. They were scuffling a little bit with that position, but he's kind of brought some calm to that offense. The senior's done a great job of kind of bringing everything into fruition for that offense when they need a big throw out of the play-action game, he can complete it. And you talked about how Liberty Center didn't really uh, throw the football. Amstutz last week did go 10-16, mm -hmm. so they did open a few things up against uh, Oak Harbor. Yeah, 987 yards on the in the air for him uh, this year. And anytime you have a senior at quarterback, it's gonna you're going to feel comfortable, right? But let's not kid around. Why they run the football so well? It's not the quarterback, Randy. It's the big guys up front, right? That offensive line is fantastic, led by Landon Bockelman. He is a human forklift. Watch him today. He'll be wearing 75. He'll just be lifting people and throwing them. He is so good. And part of the reason why he was named the All-District Lineman of the Year, he's going to do it on both offense and defense tonight. <laughs> he is a two-way player, an absolute stud. Let's take a look at this uh, Liberty Center defense. They've allowed just a total of 615 rushing yards this season. That's 47 a game. and just 90 through the air. They've got it at uh, all levels. they got some playmakers. Uh, they sure do, but the, the linebackers are fantastic. They might be the fastest three linebackers that we will see this year, led by uh, Cruz at number five. He is fantastic. Trent Cruz, absolutely. I hate to use it, but it's true. He is a Cruz missile, right? He had a hit last week on the uh, sideline that was just fantastic. It was all over social media. Uh, we're going to step aside while the Liberty Center Marching Band performs our national anthem. Come back with our keys to the game right after this here on WOSN. Hey, Randy and Miles back with you here at Spartan Stadium. Just about ready to go for this one, partner. While uh, everyone's getting set for the opening kick, let's take a look at some keys to the game tonight. And let's start with the Coldwater Cavaliers. Yeah, number one, Randy, they got to get a lead early. So if you've got a trick play that you think is going to pop, go ahead and trick it out early. You watch them at practice on Thursdays. They have about 12 trick plays. Break one out early. BB's on target. Boy, is he ever. Balen Blockberger, a perfect 8 for 8 last week in their win. He's going to have to be good again tonight. And then number three, Phil Fast. Those linebackers are really good at Coldwater. When they get a, a run key, fill that hole in a hurry. Stop that run game before it gets going. It will be skis the game tonight for the Liberty Center Tigers. Well, you remember Casey and the Sunshine Band? They had that great song where they rewrote it. Trap, 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 trap. It's the run game. It's the run game. That is what Liberty Center loves to do. So you got to take the inside trap away. Nope, you can't do it because they're so good at it. And number two, cruise control. You highlighted how good those cruise brothers are at, at carrying the football. Keep running them. Keep that cruise control going. And then take Highway 75 to the semifinals. That, that's a good way to get there. And that is number 75, Landon Bockelman, the big-time defense alignment and offense alignment run behind him. And, and I think you didn't realize this as uh, Coldwater won the toss deferred. So we're going to see Liberty Center with the football first. The OHSAA earlier announced uh, state semifinal sites already with a short week Thanksgiving coming up next week and you mentioned i-75 well as it so happens winner's going to do a little bit of traveling down i-75 already know that their matchup next week is going to be played in sydney yeah sydney it's a great venue it is yeah. do you need your passport to go to sydney sydney with an i oh check this out buddy that's rita rita ranger is right there she was so nice i stopped by out in front she got her picture taken with the dummy the dummy's name you ready for this yeah robin 
Love it. And they've been decorating Robin for years. And Robin's even scared some of her sons back in the day. Thanks for Rita letting me stop by and learn all about Robin. So the opening kickoff is officially a touchback. So Liberty Center will have to start from the 20 where Colton Cruz is going to get the call on first down. Yeah, how about that first play? Liberty Center head coach and play caller Casey Muller. He remembers what worked last year inside trap. She goes to it early, but Coldwater, they also remember they had it played well. Mark Bruns, no doubt the defensive coordinator Coldwater has really schemed against that play this year. Pick up of one on the first down run is going to bring up second and nine. A little shifting going on for the Tigers. Amstutz in the shotgun, looks to throw, fires a safe pass. This one's going to be caught shy of the first down until the yards after catch is made as Aiden Talent, who's come on second half of the season, will get a first down for the Tigers. Yeah, Aiden showing a little bit of that talent. Catches an easy hitch pass. It was uncovered. Everybody kind of went with Chambers on the inside, left him open. Nice throw by Amstutz to get things going. A negative play, a, a second and long conversion with a hitch. Pick up a 10 on the plas pass play. It's a first down for Liberty Center out to the 31. Our first downs tonight brought to you by Swanton Welding. Providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Yeah, just another part of the wing T offense. It going to the weak side right there. Chambers carrying it. Mason Welch, he got a little bit of a glimmer of how good he is. The rover flying up, making the tackle, but it's a Plus yardage play for Liberty Center, second and five. Yeah, as Miles said, they picked up five on that run, so second and five from the 36. See those split backs? Receiver tight to that right side. Pitch is going to go that way for Waylon Rents. Rents trying to get to the outside is going to be knifed down as A.J. Hallamert able to bring him down after a short game. Yeah, A.J.'s got to fly up. And if you're going to stop a wing T team, buddy, you're going to have to have support on the outside with your corners. And A.J. makes the tackle right there one-on-one. -on -one. How good is he? He was first team all Mac offensively and defensively. A.J. can play football. A replays tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima Wapak, Delphi, St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Third and short coming up for the Tigers. It's going to be third and two. Back to that tight look. Third down give and sliding his way through for the first down and more is going to be Trent Cruz. He had visions of touchdowns, but he's going to be brought down from behind after getting the first down. Yeah, see the wall just created by number 75, Bockelman. Just destroyed everybody on that side, and he might have scored had it not been for Austin Hamilton who hustled and got him from behind. A big run to get into Coldwater territory to the Cav 45, 16 yards on the run. Tigers continue to move this drive. Sixth play of the drive coming up here. Five of Ben runs. High snap. Amstutz is just going to fall on this back at his own 40-yard line. Well, it's one thing that happens if you're a shotgun team. At some point in time, you're going to have a bad snap. It was going to be buck sweep to the right-hand side. Uh, this is Amstutz falling on it. Really a smart play. Don't try to do anything with it. Just make sure you keep possession of the football. And yeah, they're going to lose 14 yards, and it is second and long, even by uh, everyone's standards. Second and 24. See, already under nine minutes gone by here in our uh, opening quarter in our scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Second and long, no worries. Liberty will just try to run for it. Tigers are going to get most of that yardage back. A good job running off that left side. Again, just running behind the left-hand side. Look at Bockelman wall it off again right there. And how about the lead block that got a pancake? Boy, this is a team that you contact a running back, they're going to get extra yardage. Just rents that time, carried guys, for about four or five yards. Yeah, Waylon Rents, another one of those guys that's come on over the uh, – Second half of the season or so. This is a Liberty Center team that really, if you look at the numbers partner, hasn't really been tested since about week one of the season. A lot of different guys have seen some playing time. 
A lot of guys stepping up. Third and 11. This one is going to be incomplete. Receiver is going to slip down. Would have been shy of the first down anyways. And it looks like the Tigers are going to send their punt team out onto the field. Now it's Landon Cruz that slip. Now this is something I noticed in pregame. A lot of the uh, Liberty Center players slipped it. Now we did have some rain throughout the day here in Lima. You wonder if the field is a little bit uh, slick because they're wearing the short little nubbies on their cleats. Uh, Ian Roseburg, their kicker, slipped quite a bit there in uh, pregame as well. As Max Walker, the all-district punter, sends this one away. End over end kick, and that one's going to be fielded inside the, or sorry, downed inside the 20. Uh, Cam Colley's going to pick it up, and he's going to kind of lament the fact that he touched it because it had that spin where it was going to get some more yardage for Liberty Center. Well, he's used to being a dangerous return man and not really the gunner. And <laughs> right. Kind of just lost his place there for a minute. Yeah, he got the football and looked at the sideline like, my bad, I shouldn't have touched that. Now, he didn't do what you have to do, right? You touch the chest, right? Anytime you say, Matt, my bad, you have to pat your chest. It is still... Decent field position here inside the 20 for the Cavs. They're going to mark this at their own. Oh, they started at their own 21. First down run, trying to get to the outside. Not a lot of running room there. As our premier sponsor for the Coldwater Cavs today is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. That was Andrew Boy Skrapansky. Is that how you say that? Andrew Skarpanski, number 73, on the tackle. I'm going to let you uh, give that one a shot. Yeah, that's right. All right. Nice play by Andrew getting behind the sticks. Second down and long. Second and 11 coming up here for the Cavs. See a man going in motion. Quick throw. This one is going to be complete. And it looks like the Cavs are going to have a first down ball popped loose after receiver hits the deck. Braylon Harlem Mertensy early on putting some of that speed on display. Yeah, good job with the inside fake. You saw a lot of black jerseys collapse on that. And then you get a, a Harlem Mert on the outside, one on one battles. You're going to like your odds if you're, you're cold water. Nice conversion down on second down and long. And picked up 13 there, so first and 10 out to the 33 yard line. Again, our first downs tonight brought to you by Swanton Welding. Liberty Center trying to set defensively. Handoff is going to be met by Seth Navar, who's going to push the runner back inside the 30-yard line. Uh, it's got to be a little bit of nerve-wracking for Coldwater and head coach play caller Chip Otten because they've run two run plays, and they have not executed either one. Both have resulted in negative yards, and that's Navar who takes on the trap and just blows it up. A little two for one action right there. It's a good picture of Chip Otten. One of the classiest dudes you're ever going to meet. He is a good fella. I always enjoy visiting Coldwater's practices. And a big opportunity for Coach. A win today would tie him with the late great John Reed, the all time winningest football coach in the history. Coldwater football about the slant there in the big completion. Hanging it out for A.J. Harlemert, who's able to bring that in and get the Swanton Welding first down. Yeah, look at Blackburg, just a little bit of a peek to the outside. Takes Cruz out there and gives him a window. And Cam Colley kind of gets caught looking as well, thinking it's going to be the bubble. And Harlemert, another big conversion. Picked up 18 there, so enough for the first downs. Coldwater able to get this out to the Liberty Center 47. So already seeing more success cold water this year against Liberty than they did all of last season in this uh, playoff uh, matchup rematch second time ever these two have met hard to believe the story histories both these programs have run again it's going to go for maybe a yard it's Coldwater trying to find something on the ground that time is Jack Ebbett getting the call <laughs> Nothing going on in the run game early, but I like the fact that they're sticking with it, right? First down, he had negative plays early. That time you do get a little positive yard, second down long behind the sticks, though. And that looks like Liberty Center, buddy. They're going to put Cam Colley, wherever A.J. Harlemert goes on the field, he's going to shadow him. That's going to be a fun matchup throughout the night. Let's pick up a one on the run. going to bring up second and nine from the 48. Very quick moving opening quarter, already down four and a half minutes left to go on our Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Trying to get rid of the football is Balin Blockberger, and he's going to go down at about the 42-yard line. Now it's going to be Zyder that's going to keep working. Watch 33 in the middle of the field. Does the old arm under rip move, and he's just going to get Blockberger to the ground. Good single leg there. <laughs> he was two points on the single leg, right? 
And, and Bachelman helps out as well. And then when you get a sack, what do you do? You flex towards your sideline. Cider with a big sack. And I feel like we have to do this since I know our uh, friends from uh, Tiger Sports Live couldn't be here tonight. But a little saccharoonie for Liberty Center. <laughs> get your shirts now. That's right. So, Saccharino. Sa yeah, Spike, and he calls I, it sa 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 Saccharino. I'm, I, I, I don't want to get in the copywriting, so we got to change it just slightly. Blockburger tunnel screen. He's going to switch ways. Liberty Center not fooled in a big hit applied there as Stephen Brogan, C number 63, cleaning that up for the Tigers. Yeah, Brogan has to make this tackle because Harlemert's going to score. He has a wall set up in front of him, but look at the play by Brogan. How about number 63 making a play out in space? And Brogan, a junior lineman stepping up there. Not really someone we've talked a lot about this year. Play picked up a yard, and just like Liberty Center's opening drive, first drive for Coldwater will fizzle out. They'll punt this one, high punt, short punt, heads out of bounds. Bounced at about the 35, so the official will go past it. And again, you see the Tiger fans sitting below us, beginning to moan and boo, and then they realize that the yodeler hasn't begun the process <laughs> yeah. back up yet. So what the official on the sideline does, he goes past where the ball went out of bounds, then he looks for the white hat and walks back towards that spot, and then the white hat goes ahead and points to him. That's where he stops, and that's where the ball's at. It's not the side official that marks it. It's actually the white hat that keeps an eye on where it goes out of bounds, something we learned a couple years ago. Mm hmm 2.57 to go in our opening quarter. Tigers get it back for their second time. They'll start this one at their own 35. Amstutz looking to throw, fires it. This one's going to be caught, and that's going to be for a Swanton Welding first down. Play made out by midfield. And yeah, nice job by settling up by Amstutz. Now, if he throws it out in front, Cruz is going to get some big yardage. Throws it a little bit behind. Cruz does a great job of corralling it. Making sure that at least they get the first down. I saw Trent Cruz juggle it a little bit. Picked up a 13. And a first down for the Tigers. Got just across midfield, then on a bad snap. We're pushed back, and that's where their opening drive bogged down. I'm trying a little end around, and we're going to get a whistle and a flag. And it looks like someone from Liberty Center started a little early. Well, Liberty Center's been their own worst enemy on the offensive side. Remember last drive is a snap over the head. Mm -hmm. They had things rolling, and now this time a false start. Got to get out of your own way. When they are executing, they're getting yardage. <laughs> Penalty backs the Tigers to their own 43, where it'll be first and 15. Well, one way to get 15 yards. See number 75, run behind him. Amstutz under center with that double wing look. Looks to throw. One on one coverage downfield. That one is going to be intercepted. <laughs> trying to hit the post on the backside. Good play action fake inside. You see the post come. This one just kind of gets away from Amstutz. Goes high. And AJ Harlemer, a little bit of creative separation with the receiver to go up and get it. And then the big time celebration, first takeaway of the night. So Harlemer comes up with the pick. And now Coldwater will get this one at their own 29. A late substitution by Liberty Center. See if they can get lined up. Cavs want to move quickly. That one is going to be dropped. Lav because Braylon Harlemer trying to sell it a little bit. Well, I catch it on the bounce, maybe no one will know. Yeah, not, not the very, case. Not very often you get that bounce that comes right back to you, right? I thought he was going to dribble through the legs, maybe a little spin move and go for the layup. I like the idea by Coldwater because you saw the coverage by Liberty Center. They're playing so far off because of the speed everywhere in Coldwater outside. You got a big cushion, go ahead and take those three yards. Second and 10 coming up from the 29. Blockberger in the shotgun and a little draw play with plenty of room and it's going to be a Swanton Welding first down as Cody Depwig able to break through for the Cavs. Oh man, I thought this was a Lavelle Edwards type of throw from BYU back in the day. The quarterback raises up, fakes like he's going to pass and then gives it to the running back. And how about the power running 
inside. Tremendous job. Great call by Chip Otten. 19 yards on the play. It's a first down out to the 48-yard line. Depwick, man, he is a load to carry the football. One thing that they like to do at Coldwater, they'll mix three guys back there so everybody stays fresh. Yeah, the running numbers uh, individually for Coldwater, not impressive. Then you realize how many different people carry the football. Same can be said for Liberty Center, but a lot more effective. This time we see, I believe, Jack Ebbing getting the call there for the Cavs. A little pitch move. Now pistol, and then one-on-one -on -one outside. Give him a little yoy and a double yoy. Makes the first guy miss, and then just keep on churning those legs. Where the defense down with your body. Picked up five on that run. Second and five, Coldwater inside the Liberty Center side of the field at the 47-yard line. Under a minute left to go on our outdoor... Ohio scoreboard. Yeah, back the back best runs of the night for Coldwater. Cavs trying a little razzle dazzle. Trying to get the ball Braylon Harlemert somewhere. Harlemert come off the end to the middle. Now we got lone penalty flag as we zoom in on the flag. Yeah, this is I think gonna be a hold right there. You're gonna see it. Yeah, I believe they're gonna get number 74, Tyler Jones with it. That came in. Where with authority, the official definitely knew he saw it. Oh, face mask is the call. So let's see if we can get another look at that one. See if we can pick it up exactly where it took place. Oh, right yep, there. Yep. yep. You yep. see the right hand yeah. Yeah. trying to get Bachman. Bachman. Bachman's so good. He, he got to grab the face the mask, right? So it is the five-yard face mask, the incidental that they have at uh, this level. So th that's a guy that's never been face masked because there are no – if you've ever been face masked, there's nothing incidental about it, man. It turns your head. It hurts your neck. There, there's nothing incidental about it. wish Come you had a helmet on sometimes. <laughs> I just grab it. <laughs> Need you to focus, Miles. Backs up. Coldwater to second and ten. Blockberger looking to get rid of the football. This one's going to come – to the near sideline pass is going to be incomplete. Stretch that out as long as he could. Lincoln looking for Mason Welch. Yeah, he had Welch kind of open, but too many black jerseys between them. When you roll like that, if you don't throw it early, boy, there's a lot of defenders that you have to throw through. Sometimes that results in an easy interception for the defense. But early in this football game, man, this has been a lot of fun. You get the feeling, though, this is a huge third down early, right? They can get maintain possession, get it into the plus side. It's going to go a long way. Looks like this will be the final play of our opening quarter. Third and ten coming up here for Coldwater. Blockberger in the shotgun. This time does fake the handoff. Looking for someone. Fires it. Has Welsh coming across the field. And he's able to slide out of bounds after getting the swat and welding first down. Uh, what a great job by Blockberger and Welch because he wants to hit Welch right there. But it's covered up. Welch just keeps working, working, working. And late... Gets open so his receiver can find him. Great job by Welch just to have the patience and understanding of where the open spot is in the zone. The 17-yard play is the final play of the opening quarter. We're scoreless after one. We'll take a break here on WOSN. No score after one here in Lima, this Division 5 regional final. We know the winner's going to move on and play in Sydney next week going to take on either Germantown Valley View or I'm trying to do this from memory forgive me that's okay I'll tell you what's been fantastic so far in this game though is third down conversions for Coldwater another big one right there but it's something they've done all year long Randy on the season they've converted 46 percent of all their third downs a lot of times that is a quarterback down and Blockburger he has stepped up tonight on third down First down coming up here for Coldwater. Wayneville, Waynesville, excuse me, the other team. Ball's, Ball's loose. loose. <laughs> and we've got all sorts of activity down on the field. I think someone threw a marker about 15 yards. Well, Liberty Center jumped to a four-man front, and they run quarterback Reed, Blockburger, who can run 101 yards on the year. Keeps it, but you got to tuck it away. Cam Colley grabs the leg, and that forces the ball to come loose, and I think Coldwater was able to get back on it. Yeah, it looked like Blockberger was able to fall back on top of it. So his run of 11 is enough 
for a first down. Again, a first down tonight brought to you by the Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Now, run working that right side as they go back to Jack Ebbing. Yeah, such good job up front by Liberty Center. When they are away from the football and you're the right-hand defensive tackle and then a linebacker and it's a run away from you, they don't chase from behind. They come right down the line of scrimmage on a great angle and get themselves involved when the run is forced back to them. Great job in pursuit by the defensive, defensive line. No gain on the play. It's going to bring up second and 10 still at the 22-yard line, trying to get inside the cold water lumber red zone. The Cavs are going to be backed up a little bit as Blackburger is going to be thrown for a loss. Now watch Bachelman, top side, just bench presses the guy off of him and then gets to the quarterback. And anytime he gets his hands on you, he is going to get you to the ground. Bachelman, he's a dude. A loss of 10 on the play. Yeah, take a look at this play right here. Something that Coldwater loves to do. Uh, the inside receiver on the trips will be number six, Harlemert. They'll try to run a post outside and hit him on a wheel route. They got trips to the top side with a tight end. Look for that and be one of the combinations they like. Third and 20, Blockberger under pressure, rolls out. One of the throws, going to take off and run. He's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage before he's out of bounds. Now decision time for the Cavs. Yeah, Blockberger uses his feet again, had the big run earlier in this series for 11 yards. This time, though, because the pocket is collapsing, has the wherewithal to keep his eyes upfield, but uses his feet to get a fourth down and about 12. Yeah, scrambled for about eight. So got to the 24, so not quite inside our red zone tonight, brought to you by Coldwater Lumber. Coldwater Lumber provides professional and reliable construction services with an experienced staff eager to assist you for your next project. They got one-on-one, Cali against Harlemer up top. top. Berger looking to throw, has a complete Welsh, and Welsh is going to be brought down near the goal line at a big fourth down conversion for the Cavs. Welsh is just going to run right up the hash between the outside linebacker and the safety. And he is going to go up high. What a big target he is. And Blockberger hit him for a big throw in the first quarter. Huge fourth down conversion. Cavaliers knocking on the door. 22 yards, and it is a first and goal from the two. Blockberger in the shotgun as Depwig to his right. Now so has Ebbing behind him. Ebbing gets the call. He's going to be met by about seven black jerseys. And it looks like he got about a yard. <laughs> this is just, we're going to test your toughness with our toughness. Run I formation right at you in A gap. And lucky that they held on to it. You see Rents just ripping at that football. Got to love it though, right? Oh, our Absolutely. best against our best. Little Oklahoma drill on the goal line. No gain on the play. He's going to bring up second and goal from the two. 12th play of the drive coming up here for the Tigers. I'm sorry for the Cavs. See the orange and white, it all gets confusing. A little interesting there in shotgun here on second down. Handoff. And a touchdown is going to be good as they go Depwig. And Depwig able to get in for the Brook Petroleum score. Well, when Depwig runs it, you don't have to get a great block. Just give him a little bit enough because his determination is fantastic. Watch it right there. Gives a leg and then the spinner Rooney and finishes in the end zone. Tremendous job by Kale Wedding right there. Number 70 burying his man to give Depwick just enough for the touchdown. Correction, I believe that was 22 Ebbing who's able to get in for the score. My apologies. So now extra point coming here for Cushot. And it is good. So Coldwater able to strike first. Thanks to the Burke Petroleum touchdown or touchdowns tonight. Brought to you by Burke Petroleum, who's now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Give them a call, 800-776-3097. 7 nothing Cavs. Early on in this one, we'll take a timeout here on WOSN. 
12 plays the distance, that scoring drive covering 71 yards. It's Jack Ebbing able to score from two yards out. Short kick is going to be fielded here by the Tigers. They're going to have it out across the 25 as they begin this drive. And on our scoreboard brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts, it's now 7-0 Coldwater. Nathan Elander gets down and makes the tackle. How about the rain that that kick brought down, right? That was a sky ball if I've ever seen one. That's one way you can handle a dangerous return like Cam Colley. Put it really high in the air, make him wait as you guys get down inside his face. Tigers are going to start at their own 26. Trying to match the score. Don't know, this might be the first time all year Liberty Center has trailed. <laughs> it hasn't happened a great deal, right? Might be the biggest drive of the year. Got to answer. Amstutz with those split backs and the wing back is going to give to the first man through. And a yard will get out to about the 30. And Troy Milligan, a nose. Recognize why they shifted into that heavy formation. Why they shift to it? Because that's where they run the water run the football. Comes across angles, gets the simple little dive play. And give three on the run to the 29. It's going to bring up second and seven. See Liberty Center switching again. They'll go to tight end in the wing now to the left side. They're going to run that way with Colton Cruz. And he's not going to have a whole lot of running room. Yeah, Cody Depwig recognized that one in a hurry. That is the old buck sweep that every wing T team runs and runs and runs. They start with the trap, and once they establish the trap, try to get the buck sweep going. Coldwater did a great job on the opening play of the night stopping that trap. This time they step up and stop the buck sweep. Pick up a three on that one's going to bring up an interesting third and four call out of Liberty Center. Amstutz under center gets that quick pitch. Nice job protecting the football as they go back. I believe that's Colton Cruz. Looks like a man down for Coldwater here. And they got a flag down as well. Toss sweep to the outside. Blown up pretty well. And then, oof, ooh, look at the collision right there. That is Will Berry, who is down on the ground, but they got him up, and he is fired up. Yeah, it was a, a rough helmet to helmet. That would be a targeting in the collegiate or pro ranks. Now, how about that one last night in the pit game? That was, that was as, as someone said on social media, that's going to be the one the NCAA is going to send out to everyone. Right? Here's what you don't do. Yeah, Will Barry, he's a tough dude, right? You take a shot right here. You're going to see him. He fights off the double team, spins off the block of Bauckham, and then, hello, shoulder pad, and that is a stinger. If you've never had a stinger, man, oh, it is like a bolt of lightning down your arm. Penalty was on Liberty Center. It's going to bring up a second or third, excuse me, in long. Cruz is going to catch the pass, and it looks like the officials are going to say that's enough for Swan Welding first down to the near side. I'm not sure if Cruz's favorite receiver is Michael Irvin or not, but if it is, he did his best impression because he comes out of that break and chucks Harlemert to get himself free. And, hey, if the officials are going to let you play, use it, right? Be physical. Pick up a 14. We'll get the Tigers out to their own 36. Rents is going to go in motion while he was still going. Ball was snapped, and that's going to cause a little confusion. That's going to be the second false start already in this game. Hey, good job by Trent Cruz. You saw him right there, number five. Looking at his the guys in the huddle and on the sideline. Settle down, give him the two hands, shove him down to the ground. Settle down, we're okay. They have been their own worst enemy in this football game, but just converted to big third down. Just got to make it a little more difficult. First and 10 in a game like this is tough. First and 15, even tougher. That is where Liberty's at. First and 15, back at their own 31-yard line. They find themselves down by a score. They're going to switch and go to that uh, power side to the left side. Run's going to go that way with Waylon Rents. Rents able to break through. Going to two blockers leading the way. He's in the cold water territory. And finally, he's going to be brought down inside the 35. <laughs> Wow, it's got to be concerning for Coldwater because they blitz right into it. 
It doesn't matter. They're just going to pull everybody around. How about the block by Navarre? Number 70 getting free. And then look at the work inside. Number 55 leading the way. Tremendous job by Liberty Center. They don't just watch the end of the run. They keep blocking. And that's Gisagi, number 55, that leads the way. 35 yards. And a big play for Liberty Center as they get to the cold water. 34. This one's going to be tripped up right near the line of scrimmage. Doesn't really allow to get started. Yeah, what a player Mason Welch is, though, number 14. He starts out as the free, moves up to the rover, recognizing what's going on with that run game. And he makes a play at the line of scrimmage. How many guys that play in the secondary have the physicality and the knowledge to come up and make that play? So that's Trenton Cruz held to no gain. It's going to bring up second and ten. Single back with the double wing and the single receiver this time. One of those men will go in motion. I'll fake to him as they go straight ahead. Saw the single digit. Make sure I get the right player here for Liberty Center. I believe that was Trent Cruz again. Yeah, look how fast that trap hits. So tough for a linebacker to react to it because they execute it so quickly. You're a defensive tackle and you think you're going to make a play, you're free, and all of a sudden you've got a shoulder pad in your rib cage because that guard is pulling it and getting on top of you. Pickup of six on the play is going to bring up third and four. Liberty Center back to that split back look with Dan Stutz under center. Handoff back to Rents. Works to the left side. Flag's going to come in here. He's going to take a big hit. At, for the moment, has the Swan Welding first down, but we'll see if this play is going to stand. Now, Mark Bruns, defensive coordinator, Coldwater, elects to blitz into the A gap to try to take the trap away. It was initially just walled off. You've got to call down if you're in alignment. You see the blitzer coming. And you call down and get the block, but they're going to chop it, and that's it's something you can't do. Chop block is going to back up Liberty Center. You know, that Liberty Center stat guys in the booth next to us. We might have to uh, visit with them and see what the penalty numbers are. Are at halftime. Yeah, it's gonna, starting to pile up. That's going to be a tough call. <laughs> really tough call because I'm not sure it was actually what they thought. They thought it was a double team block. Bainfelt got another guy by the legs, not the guy that was initially contacted by the center. 15 yard penalty is going to make this third and long. Amstutz looking to throw. Has a man open middle of the field. Pass has caught another flag down as Colton Chambers has this one to the 30. We'll take a look at the penalty flag. Well, the problem with running RPOs is if you don't throw it right away, you're going to have linemen upfield. And you see the offensive line for Liberty Center about three yards upfield. Liberty Center faithful are not happy with the call, but it's the right call. And our uh, instant replays tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphos, St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So the Tigers continue to get backed up now to their 48. I, I never like RPOs as a former uh, lineman because now you're asking a lineman, come off the ball and block people, be physical, right? But don't do it because we might throw at the same time. Right? You can't have best of both worlds on that. Fourth and 24. Amstutz going to load up, throw this one downfield. This one's going to be incomplete. One was a dangerous. A.J. Harlemer at first thought he had his hands on it. Landon Cruz almost came away with it. Now they're playing quarters coverage, meaning they're not going to get beat vertically. Harlemer goes up. Boy, he almost mistimed it, and Cruz had a chance at it. Harlem, of course, does the international sign for incompletion. Two hands, waving it off. It's Max Walker back on for his uh, second punt of the night. All district punter at about 37 yards a kick. Send this one high into the air. Coldwater nearly came away with that one. This one also takes a Liberty Center bounce. A nice job this time by the return team. They're going to let that go, and it's going to pay off as that thing is going to die at the one-yard line. <laughs> How about the roll by Max Walker? Had it the first time they punted the football, but Kim Colley touched it a little bit early, early. Not this time, as that rolled about 15 yards down to one. I thought I was golfing with Randy Roberts just from about 90 yards away. He hit that green and let it roll oh, in. <laughs> it must be the second Randy Roberts out there because <laughs> this one does not play golf like that. 
A lot of words he cannot say on TV <laughs> when you're playing golf with this Randy Roberts. Well, can't really start much deeper than Coldwater as they are right now. But you can tie a state record with the longest run, right? 99 yards. 349 left to go. Opening half of the scoreboard tonight brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Blockberger looking to throw on this one on first down. This one is going to be caught. And I think the Cavs were thinking the same thing you were when that one was hauled in. Yeah, take a shot. Always love this as a play caller. Go ahead. Let your better receiver. Oh, he's even held early, but goes up the post route. Comes back to get Liberty Center. Anytime you get one-on-one -on -one with someone with the last name Harlemert, go ahead and take the shot. 35 yards to Harlemert. Will get the Cavs out to their own 36 and enough for a Swanton Welding first down. He has Blake Garber working on Harlemert. And Blockberger, he has been absolutely fantastic early in this game. This was going to be knocked out of the air. Bachman with the interception. Big fella looking to score, and he'll do so. Rumble, big man, rumble into the end zone. What a defense alignment stream. The interception, the pick six by 75. I'll have to see who this was tipped by. Was it Cruz? And Bachman at the right place at the right time. Sheds off a would-be blocker. I don't think Blockberger is going to try to tackle him. And he ties it up with the Burke Petroleum score. Oh, how about Trenton Cruz? You teach guys when to rush in the passer. Urban Meyer always said this, right? Right-handed quarterback, go high with your left hand if you can't get to him. Get the ball on, hand on the ball. Deflection and Bockelman. How about the speed by 75? Rumbling into the end zone. And now Ian Rosebrook, who's like 100 of 120 on extra points this year. Liberty Center's had a lot of touchdowns. Now we got a flag coming in as the play clock might have run all the way down. Uh, Coldwater is pointing and saying that it was a false start. They kind of did the flinch. Either way, Liberty Center is backed up. So that allows us to tell you that the defensive score is still a Burke Petroleum touchdown. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. Yeah, Bockelman, he, he stepped on the gas on that one. Rosebrook will knock down the extra point, and we are tied at seven. We're going to take a look at this interception one more time. Oh, just fantastic effort by Cruz to get his hand on the football, and he can get enough of Bockel Burger to Blockberger to get him to the ground, and then Bockelman rumbles into the end zone. A heads up play by Trenton Cruz as well. He saw Blockberger begin to turn his body. Cruz didn't want to take away anything, didn't want the illegal block in the back and laid off at a big score. And we're now tied at seven on our scoreboard brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Man, we thought this was going to be fun. It sure is, isn't it? What a night we have had so far. Um, see Cam Colley down on the left-hand side by the ultimate door logo getting his left angle retaped left ankle retaped and you got to wonder that's why he was out of the game Blake Garber was stepped in at corner and that was when Coldwater went vertical hopefully get uh, and it looks like he will get Cam Colley back on the field cuz that that is the fastest guy in black and orange tonight for Liberty Center Max Walker will send this one deep. That one is going to hit at the goal line. Skid through the uh, Spartan Stadium end zone. So Coldwater will have to take over at their own 20-yard line. I talked to Paul Amstutz yesterday at practice. He's the special teams coach at Liberty Center. I said, Coach, you're not going to kick the number six, are you? And he goes, our guys wanted to because they believe that they can get them to the ground. I said, Coach, you're not going to kick them. Like, he goes, we're going to try and kick it in the end zone. If we can't kick it in the end zone, we're going to kick it away from them. So looks like that's the strategy. And they kick it in the end zone. Boy, it, it was really tough starting position. Kick it to any one of those. That's that's just the Liberty Center side, by the way. That is packed over here. Yeah, both communities really showed up. Cavs from their own 20. 
They'll try to run it here on first down. This one's going to stretch to the outside, able to turn upfield and get a decent gain is going to be Cody Depwig. Now look at the speed by Depwig. Pretty well played by the guys in black and orange on defense. And he's going to run out of a tackle right there by Cruz. Uses that free arm to get himself some free yardage. And a nice job on first down. And a run game that was really stymied in that first quarter. Starting to open up a little bit more. Picked up nine on that run. So second and one coming up here for the Cavs. Blockberger goes all the way to the sideline. Gets the play. Comes back. Looks at the three receivers he's got to that far side. Instead, a little RPO again. Long kill for Depwig, and that gave Liberty Center time to come make the stop. Now watch Trenton Cruz read it, fly in there, get involved on the tackle, and it's never a good sign if you're carrying the football and your offensive linemen are looking at you after you get the handout. That means they missed their blocks. Loss of two on the play, now third and three. Noah Genson is involved in the tackle right there. You see number 64. Liberty Center mixing some guys in, trying to stay fresh. Bachelman back in. Quick throw, trying to get the first down. That one's going to be hauled in as they get A.J. Harlemer. Uh, just too easy on third down, right? Just walk up to the to the sticks and then turn. The crew's got to do a better job of situational football and knowing where the six are on third down. Too easy to run a hitch and get a conversion. Pick up a seven, that's enough for the Swanton Welding first downs. Coldwater able to get to their own 34. Take a look at your top side, six and four. The Harlem brothers, top side by themselves. Looking to go that way instead to run another draw play. Is able to run out a couple of would-be tacklers with Depwig. He's going to be ushered out of bounds at about the 36 or 37. Now, when you have an aggressive defensive line, what, what can you do with it? Well, you can screen it, or you can kind of just let them run, stay on them, run a draw. Coldwater ran it successfully in the first quarter for big yardage. Come back to it. Better played that time by Liberty Center. Picked up a couple in that run, so second and eight. Coldwater taking their time. Under two minutes left to go, I want to tell you that the premier sponsor of Coldwater today is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. Second down, quick throw. Again, getting it out to Braylon Harlemert. And Harlemert's going to be snowed under after no game. Oh, what a great job of open field tackling to get Harlemert to the ground. And that's going to be a timeout now by Chip Otten. Let's see who comes up and makes a hit. Looks like W number 24, Colton Chambers. Boy, that's good work. What a dangerous one-on-one -on -one when you have Harlemer out there, but not when Chambers is on duty. He makes the tackle. No, oh, making a change. I think the uh, clock did not stop right away, so they're going to make a change. So uh, we have a stoppage. I want to tell you that this timeout is a Northwest State Community College timeout. Discover Ohio's number one community college, Northwest State, today. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. Now, Coldwater been so good on third down tonight. If you're Matt Bryan, defensive coordinator at Liberty Center, how do you how do you combat it? You go man here and then bring some pressure, or you drop eight. They've dropped eight and rushed three, got home a couple times, but as Blackburger able to use his feet also. And that, boy, you did a great job putting that banner up right there, that WOSN banner. It's the only thing Ken Reeker trusts us to do. <laughs> I'm glad with that, though, right? Ken, you want to set anything up? No, you got to uh, do the banner. He's like, that stuff's expensive. Don't right. touch it. I, those, those banners are 10 for a dollar. If you, if you tear them, <laughs> you get another one. You're not touching my equipment. Third and long for Coldwater following the Northwest State Community College timeout. Blogberger just going to throw this one away. Looks like they're setting something up to that far side. Didn't have it. Yeah, I like that. Liberty Center gave a look like they're going to drop eight in the coverage. Kind of full block burger. But at the last second, brought two linebackers through the middle. Brought some late pressure. Did enough to get the fourth down. Looks like Liberty Center is going to get this bag with about a minute and a half left to go before we get to halftime. So depending on how this pun goes, see what Liberty Center can do. 
You wonder, a seven all game. You wonder if Chip Bonton might regret that timeout he used on third down. Let that clock run a little bit. But he, of course, was thinking be aggressive. They pick up the first down, and now they are in business. This one is set pretty deep into the night. Fair catch is made. It's exactly a minute 30 to go. Fair catch made in the three. And the so the Tigers will have 90 seconds in which they're going to try to go about 71 yards. As Thomas Moeller, number three, on the fair catch. Uh, trying to find Cam Colley on the sideline. We still have not seen him back since he got that left ankle taped up. wonder if they'll reevaluate him at halftime, but he is a big part of what Liberty Center likes to do defensively and, of course, on the return game. So what do the Tigers do here in the final minute and a half, starting from their own 29? Amstutz with the handoff here on first down. Waylon Rents. Rents is going to be brought down as Welsh, while on the ground, able to make the stop there. Yeah, watch Mason Welsh recognize it. He's going to come underneath the block of Navarre and then get involved on the tackle. That is not a defensive back that is shy of contact. He finishes. He is fun to watch. A game of a two on the run. Another stoppage here. I want to tell you that it is another Northwest State Community College timeout. Discover Ohio's number one community college, Northwest State, today. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. This is Miles from uh, our perch high above the Liberty Center sideline. Look, Cam Colley actually talking to his coaches. We're talking to a, I thought it was a coach, might have been another player. I see him kind of walking on this. Do you see him? He's right here. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, I understand we're having a full conversation <laughs> between ourselves <laughs> on television. Well, but I thought you were asking the audience. <laughs> Folks, can you see him? And here's the, the old press your luck uh, split screen. Both coaches doing a great job communicating with their guys. And, you know, Kali is kind of, you see him in the background right there. He got that black tape on the ankle, getting himself loose. Yeah, that is a frustrating thing. I mean, you're an athlete and you're built on speed. When you got a, a wheel injury like that, you, you want your wheels to be working. Second and eight coming up here for Liberty Center. Out just across the 30. Amstutz will give to the first man through. This is going to be Trenton Cruz. Cruz is going to get two, maybe three. Apparently it wasn't enough for the Tigers to use uh, one of their two remaining timeouts. See, official at the far side, did Coldwater use one? It looks like they did. Yeah, kind of a, a weird moment in this football game as far as clock management is. Both teams kind of just staring at each other with a standoff. You know, do you want to use a timeout or not? And Liberty Center used one a, a moment ago. Didn't get mo uh, the yardage that they wanted to go fast, so then Coldwater starts to get a little bit greedy on third down and medium here, see if they can get the ball back. It's going to bring up... Third down and again are timeouts brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Discover Ohio's number one community college, Northwest State. Today, visit northweststate.edu to get started. And again, we want to tell you that our instant replays brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphos, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken or home style happens here. Man, they got good trainers over at Cold War. You see that? They didn't come out and tie your shoes for you. A little bit of a tire change on the pit crew. Good job getting Miles Potcotter's shoes working. Got to have shoes at work. Trainers That's come out important. and tie them up. Third down coming up here for Liberty Center. Third and about five. Minute eight left to go in our opening half. I think you run the football if you're here at Liberty Center. That's exactly what they're going to do. It's Rents. He's going to be held up immediately. Getting there quickly as I have to go to the second page of my <laughs> cold water roster. Troy Milligan, 76, big senior defensive tackle, makes the stop. Yeah, Milligan, great job. Second time in this half but we've seen him get cut across the face of the center and make the tackle on a straight dive. They had the angle called correctly, and you're able to do that because they have a nose tackle they'll rip across the center. Pickup of another yard. It's going to bring up fourth and four. I would imagine if you're Liberty Center with the way your defense has played as Coldwater uses its final Northwest State Community College timeout. Liberty will just punt this one away. 
They do a better job of protection. Remember the last time they punted the football, they got a great roll. But let's not forget that Coldwater got really close to blocking that punt. You go safe punt right here. Go tight. Make sure nobody gets in. Kick that football. And if you tell your, your punter, kick it towards the sideline. Get it away from dangerous returners. You definitely don't want A.J. Hallermer touching the football in space. He's back deep for Coldwater. The good news for Coldwater is they're going to get this one back. The bad news is they used all their timeouts to get it back. So if this punt is any sort of successful. See what Coldwater likes to do is Walker will feel or send this one where it is going to be fair caught by Harlemer at about the 26. A good job of coverage by Liberty Center. You saw Cruz in the face of Harlemer right away. Smart play. Don't risk turning the football over by Harlemer. And plus, wasting time if you don't get a big return. Fair catch it. Get your offense set up about the 26. So with 53 seconds in the half, here comes Coldwater. Hey, if you're Liberty Center, though, you're thinking, this is great. We can score again, right? Our score came off of a, a defensive <laughs> interception. We're in prime spot That's right exactly here. Exactly what they're thinking. Let's see what the Cavs do from their own 26, under a minute, no timeouts. A little surprise playing man down on the bottom. Well, they're going to break out a little razzle-dazzle. They try to get this one to the outside. It might have been a razzle. Not sure if there's a lot of dazzle. Harlemer, there might have been a hit out of bounds as well. There's a lot of commotion going on. Yeah, Trent Cruz recognizes this. He's going to be there. But the real play is made by Grady Miller, number one, top side, working against Braylon Harlemer. And they're going to get, yep, touch the white line, run out of bounds, and they're going to get Trent Cruz with a little extra hit out of bounds and that's going to save Coldwater from a negative play. Yeah, and that 15 yards kind of changes your strategy here for the final 45 seconds. Yeah, it sure does. And another unforced error by Liberty Center. You had it played so well. And don't bail Coldwater out with a mistake, but unfortunately their aggressiveness comes back to get them. So that moves them out to the 38. With 45 seconds to go. Blockberger. Looking to throw. And scrambles all the way back. He's just going to unload this one towards his bench. Now Andrew Jones, number 68. They're going to say, you got to do a better job protecting your quarterback. But I'm going to stick up for Andrew because he's expecting Blockberger to step up in the pocket, right? So he has his man, and he's driving him back. And Blockberger, one of the few mistakes he's made tonight, he tries to get out of the pocket. There was a pocket in front of him. Andrew Jones did a good job of giving his quarterback an opportunity to step forward. Second and ten coming up for Coldwater. Scramble took about eight seconds. Blockberger is going to roll to the near side. He's got Harlemert short. Still looking, still behind the line. Finally throws this one towards the sideline. He's caught. He's going to go this time to A.J. Harlemert. He's able to get out of bounds. He'll stop the clock shy of the first down at about the 45. Yeah, Blockberger has done such a good job of adding extra seconds to his throws. That time comes all the way back to the right. Unfortunately, his receivers kind of stopped their routes. you got to work back towards your quarterback. Harlemert was able to get himself free on the sideline. Third and three for Coldwater from the 45. A big cushion by the secondary of Liberty Center. Blockberger wanted the screen, set it up, and he's going to once again just float this one towards his bench. Now... Big decision time for Coldwater, but if it's that hard of a decision. No, you punt the football here, right? You don't pick it up on fourth down. You give Liberty Center at least a shot to throw it up. You see Blockberger getting coached over there. And Owen Kunk stands at his own 30. He's the punter for Coldwater. As Coach Clanky over there working with Blockberger, grabbing him, telling, asking him what he saw. 
Liberty guys trying to jump. Looks like trying to force Coldwater offside. Punt hangs in the air as Liberty Center didn't have anyone back. It's going to take a backward bounce. Down at about the 34, so 15 seconds, couple of timeouts. What does Liberty Center try to do here? That, I take a knee and go in at a half tied 7 7. Yeah, because, you know, Coldwater, what are they going to do? They're, they're not going to come up and play press man, right? They're going to drop into quarter coverage, try to keep everything in front. Well, they're actually going to call this the 35. I shorted the Tigers a yard. And it does appear that Liberty is just going to take a knee. This will make it official as the knee is down. Teams are going to head towards their respective locker rooms. And we thought that first half was fun. What are we going to see in the second half, partner? Oh, man, it, it, it's, if it's anything close to that first half, we're going to have a dynamic second half, and don't forget, Coldwater going to get the football first. So seven all, our score at the half. We'll take a timeout. I have the second half for you when we return here on WOSN. Seven all here at the half, Liberty Center and Coldwater. This is Division Five Region 18 a regional final from Spartan Stadium in Lima with Miles Holiday and Randy Roberts. Partner, been treated to a good one so far through the first half. I think, it's, uh, think it keeps going here in the second half? Yeah, two defenses that uh, been, been fantastic throughout the year showed up again in a big way here in that first half. And, man, it has been uh, everything we thought it would be and a little bit more. A lot of fun. I, I'm excited about the second half. What do you think? What's going to happen? The black and orange going to win? I think uh, that's good. I like I like their chances, that's for sure. But we saw, we saw a defensive score. That's really helped Liberty Center stay into this one. So... Does someone get a second one maybe and make the difference? If Liberty Center can figure out how to get Coldwater off the field on third down <laughs> and give their offense a little bit more time to get going and stop killing themselves, right? Liberty Center, how many oh, penalties mistakes bad. did they make in that first half? You know, they, they might be able to get this football game, but you know, Coldwater's come out with a great plan, and they have executed extremely well. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun here in the second half. Coldwater is going to uh, get the ball first to begin this second half of action. Seeing both kickers be able to uh, put the ball through the end zone for the opposing team to start deep in their own territory. Liberty Center also had to punt down at the one-yard line. Wasn't a problem for Coldwater. They broke out the big play to get it out to the 35. So Max Walker's got this one uh, teed up. Send this one high into the air. This one will be fielded at about the two. Harlemer's going to get this one. Has a little bit of room to the outside. Someone reach in, get him by the arm, but he'll get a couple of extra yards out across the 25. Coldwater will begin the second half. Boy, he's always living dangerously, though, when you give Harlemer an opportunity. And one of those guys that when he returns a football, you just kind of hold your breath, wait for something exciting to happen because he has got electricity in those feet are going to spot this at the ball spotted at the 26 they have the chains in the down box at the 27 so we're going to have momentary stoppage while they get all that set looks like we are ready to go Balen Blockberger in the shotgun it might have been a direct snap don't much how much Blockberger Got on that one, can redirect the ball towards Braylon Harlemert on first down. Yeah, it's kind of a little touch pass to Harlemert, and boy, he can get to the edge in a hurry. Yeah, really good blocking on the edge right there by Cody Depwig, getting his receiver slash slot runner to the perimeter. He'll pick up seven on the play. It's going to bring up second and three from the 33. Liberty Center going with Cruz and Miller at corner, so you, you wonder if Cam Colley is shut down for the rest of the night. Blockberger looking to throw. This one's going to be complete to that far side. Having to come back to it was A.J. Harlemer. Let's see where the officials are going to spot him. Looks like just past the sticks. It'll be enough for a swat and welding first down. Uh, something that they've liked to use tonight is that little hitch on the outside because of the cushion. Cruz comes up and makes the tackle. Yeah, a really good spot by the official because Harlemer did catch it and move backwards towards the chains. 
And it is a pickup of four, so first down at the 37. First downs tonight brought to you by the Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Now under the ground and nowhere to go for Jack Evans. He's going to be hit back at the 35-yard line. You're going to see it top side come free right there. Now it's going to be Cruz who timed that blitz extremely well. It's going to be Cruz and Cruz. The other one lands on top of the pile. Let's go back to that play before that where they completed the hitch for the first down. And one more hitch for a completion. You know what you're going to see after that, right? Hitch and go. Hitch and go. They'll have it set up. It'll be the third time that they caught it. Use that uh, aggressive nature of this Liberty Center defense against them. Loss of two is going to bring up second and 12. Blockberger, middle of the field. That one's going to be a big hit applied there as the pass is caught at the 42-yard line. If your last name is Cruz, that's one thing that you can anticipate is that you're a big-time hitter. Another Cruz delivering a big-time hit. Oh, that is a helmet stagger. Anytime you get a little whiplash after the catch. You know you've been contacted pretty hard. And that's Landon Cruz, the big hit. It's pickup of eight on the pass play. Third down coming up here for Coldwater. Third and about four. I have no idea how he held on to that football. That, that was a vicious hit by Landon Cruz. One of the biggest we've seen so far tonight. The Tiger team loves to hit. So all their opponents say, quick third down. Middle of the field. This one's going to be caught Welsh with it. It's going to take a couple of Tigers to bring him down, but not before he picks up another Swanton Welding first down. He's just going to run the under route. Welsh is going to come free, working on Cruz. you got to contact the guy. Don't let him cross your face on third down and short yardage. Just too easy of a throw. And a Welsh, yet again, another big catch for this Coldwater offense. Picked up eight there. Instant replays tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphos, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Coldwater now to the Liberty Center side of the field. They're going to call it the 49. Harlem Merton, the end around, is going to get this one for about three before he is tracked down from behind. Yeah, did you see who tracked him down Bockelman. from behind? Yeah. Bockelman just swallows them like Jaws coming out of the ocean from behind. Boy, what an athlete. Catch a guy like Harlemer with that incredible quickness. You don't see defensive linemen very often have the ability to do that. He is something special for this Liberty Center defense. It's going to be a gain of two, so second and eight now from the 47. Blockberger in the shotgun, looks near side. He's going to lead his receiver. A little too much as Welsh trying to get open in the middle of the field. It's a good thing maybe he didn't hang on to that one as it looks like Trent Cruz was ready to apply another big hit. Yeah, it sure was. Cruz kind of jumped down and played the robber position in the middle of the field because they brought two backers to the strong side. And it looked like Coldwater thought they had the area vacated, but Cruz was there and he was going to deliver a big time hit. So third down coming up here for Coldwater. So. One of the big things for Liberty Center, see if they can get their defense off the field here on third and eight. Blockberger looks to throw, fires. This one to the sideline is going to be incomplete. H.J. Harlemer tried to haul that in on the sideline, but not successful in fourth down upcoming. Yeah, it's really a tough throw because there's such a small window you have to throw it over top the under defender and then in between so that top side defender playing the deep third doesn't come back and make a play on it. Almost a completion, but well played by Liberty Center. So we do see Cam Colley still kind of looks like nursing that ankle, still just walking gingerly on the sideline. Hasn't left the eyesight of the training staff of Liberty Center. As Moeller on to field this one, and he's going to be suplexed down just past the 10 yard line. Uh, you wonder if he lets it go if it grows into the end zone. He caught it about the five yard line. Usually it hits, especially on turf, it's going to roll into the end zone, but he catches it and at least gets it out to about the 10. Well, Moeller does have some experience in the punt return game, so this isn't like the first time that uh, he's been out returning punts. Right, and, and you got to believe he, he knows a little bit about football, right? I understand that his dad knows a little bit about the game. <laughs> he got last name Moeller. 
And your, your, your dad's a football coach. you, you got to know a little bit about football, right? The Tigers are going to start from their own 11 here. 7.45 left to go. Ball's on the ground. Third quarter. This one troublesome. Everyone for cold water running up. Now they're going to push that pile back. Boy, yet another mistake by Liberty Center offensively. You see it on the ground right there. Amstutz alertly picks it up. Very fortunate that ball just kind of stayed there. Looked like they're trying to run the old fumble rooski, but it wasn't. It was just a bad snap combination. So just a regular fumble rooski. <laughs> just a regular fumble rooski. How about that play Rutgers broke out a couple of weeks ago against Ohio State where it looked like it was going to be a fumble, and then they just handed it to the running back behind them? Great play. Tigers do pick up a yard on the play. Amstutz now looking to throw. Doesn't find anyone. Now he's got three blockers. He's going to take off and run. He'll get out near the 20-yard line where it's going to bring up third and short. Now, this is why you have a senior quarterback, right? Play action is just a two-man route. It's going to be covered really well. And nowhere to throw it. So what do you do? Tuck it under and get some positive yardage. And he's going to be contacted pretty hard by Depwig. Pick up an eight. Call it third and one from the 20-yard line. Quick pitch coming to the near side, able to cut up field. This is going to be Cruz, and it looks like he will have the Swan Welding first down. Yeah, such a tough play on short yardage, that quick little toss to get you on the perimeter. Everybody's bunched up on third and short, thinking it's going to be middle run. They get it outside, and then if you overflow too much, just a quick little cut by Cruz to get the first down. So we'll give him about six, it looks like, two to 26. Tigers trying to take their first lead. They fell behind 7-0, and I said it was the first time they trailed a year. I was talking to some uh, Liberty Center fans at halftime. It's actually the second time in the season opener Tenor scored first. Give here out to about the 30. That's a pretty good year, though, right? <laughs> the first drive of the year, you get behind, and then the rest of the year, and like, then you haven't trailed the rest of the we'll year. We'll be okay. Yeah. I was told, yeah, we matched it quickly, took the lead, and that's been it. Like kind of getting back to what Liberty Center does, right? Just line up, run our offense, the stuff that we install the first week of practice, and we're going to run it extremely well. And they shift the formation, see if it's outnumbered. Second and six. It's going to be Cruz trying to cut this one upfield as he runs out of a tackle. He's going to have himself another swan welding first down as he gets out to the 41. Yeah, pretty well played initially inside. You see number 60, Andrew Jones, get a stop on it, but just the determination of Cruz to keep rumbling. And lucky Will Berry is there to jump on his back, or else it would have been even more yardage for Coldwater. Picked up 11 there, so very quick moving third quarter. Already under five minutes left to go on our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Waylon Renz getting his first carry the second half. He's going to stay on his feet and get his way into cold water territory and pick up another swamp welding first down. And I guess he cold water kind of rolled the dice. They blitzed, but it's to the weak side. Jack Ebbing can't get there. And if you can't get there and you vacate the middle, it's going to be positive yardage. Uh, Rents, another big run for him. Had a big run in the first half. It's the first time you feel like Liberty Center's got a lot of rhythm on offense tonight. It picks up 13 there. It's a first down with Coldwater side of the foot or the field at the 46. We'll be seeing a game of limited possessions. These teams had it once. We're down near the four minute mark of our third quarter. Back to the ground will go the Tigers. They'll get about two, three more as they go back to Cruz. <laughs> Yeah, it looked like it was stopped at the line of scrimmage, right? But you still get three yards. Anytime you're getting three yards in this type of offense on first down, it sets you up. You're still on course. Liberty will send in saying like Aiden Talent for Landon Cruz. They might be the ones running the plays in. Talent, single receiver, now lines up at the far side. And Stutz. Looking to run. He's going to get this one. Takes this out of bounds. 
don't know if that was a broken play or not, but it's gonna work because he's gonna get a slot welding first down. And a tremendous job by Rents right there. Sealing the edge, he's gonna get another block by Cruz who gets away with a chop block upfield, but if the officials don't see it, it's not a foul. Allows the quarterback to maneuver for another first down. Pick up a nine out of Amstutz. Tigers got into the cold water 34. Ninth play of the drive upcoming. Give to the first man through. This is Cruz. He's going to be brought down from behind, but not before he gets inside the red zone. As Kale Wenning will have to bring him down. Now, Will Berry's going to track it down from behind, but. It is concerning for Coldwater because the inside trap is starting to be effective for Liberty Center. This was the play that gashed this Coldwater defense a year ago in the playoffs against Liberty Center. So they have nightmares to see in that play. Yeah, it was Barry. My apologies. 78, not 70. Pick up a 16 on the run. Gets Liberty Center inside the Coldwater Lumber Red Zone as the carry here will get to about the 11. Red Zone tonight brought to you by Coldwater Lumber, providing professional and reliable construction services with an experienced staff eager to assist you with your next project. Well, it looks like Liberty Center at halftime got together and they said, you know what, we're trying to do too much in that first half. All these exotic formations, throwing the ball a little bit. Let's go back to what we do, right? Let's get in our basic formations and run our plays over and over again. And that's been the theme of this drive. It's going to be the 11th play of the drive coming up here. Quick pitch, Cruz, he's going to take a big hit as he's brought down at about the eight-yard line. As Potcotter, number 24 on the blitz, he kind of runs from behind and gets involved on the tackle. Looks like Cruz is going to have to leave the game, though. Helmet came off, and he is laboring on the sideline. It would be a huge loss for Liberty Center. Was enough to get yet another Swanton Welding first down. Now first and goal. From the eight, yeah, it looks like he took a lick in the side, having some trouble staying up. Well, training staff trying to just get a little bit of room on the sideline. Everyone from Liberty Center all piled in right at about the 25, right at the edge of their box, see their offense continue to work. Here's one just sliding down. Not the way that play was designed. But see the ball carrier losing his footing a little bit. Yeah, trying to run outside and wall it off. Yeah, but just the footing gives way. About the third time we have seen a Liberty Center player lose their footing on this turf. Colton Cruz at lost his footing. No gain on the play. Second goal from the eight. Amstutz long call. Back to Colton Cruz trying to cut up field. And he's going to get in. Or they marked him short. They did give him the touchdown. Waiting for the. They didn't see the official at first. We do get confirmation. He's in for the Burke Petroleum touchdown. Now look at the work outside by Navarre getting guys, but it's going to be the physicality at the goal line that's going to pay off. You guys trying to stop me at the second? No way. Uh uh. I am scoring. Big time touchdown for Liberty Center. Going back to what they do best. Their base offense. Colton Cruz scores from eight yards out. And again, our touchdowns tonight brought to you by Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for red, residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. Extra point is up and good as well. So the Tigers of Liberty Center out in front, 14-7. Late in the third quarter, we'll take a break here in WOSF. A Liberty Center doing a Liberty Center type things. 12 plays, 89 yards, taking 639 off the clock, and the touchdown drive ends with Colton Cruz scoring from eight yards out as the Tigers on top for the first time tonight, now 14-7 over Coldwater. That was just up front, getting on at white jerseys and driving them, and then running backs having determination not to get tackled. As Walker's... Kickoff fielded in the end zone, so it'll be touchback for Coldwater. We want to tell you that the premier sponsor for Coldwater this evening is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. And I see a little bit of frustration by A.J. Harlemert. Ball went into the end zone again, <laughs> shaking his head. I want to return it. He's been it. ready to return every single one. This is the official's 
for whatever reason, blow it dead. I, I kid because I know why. But. And, and then, then tells the Liberty Center guys running by him, kick it to me, will you? Not sure that's what he probably, said. Probably say, yeah, might be a few other words that Miles and I aren't uh, uh, legally allowed to repeat on television. Blockburger under pressure. It's Cruz with this one as Blockburger is thrown a few uh, into his bench. Haven't quite made it into the stands for souvenirs. Well, good to see Trent Cruz back in the game defensively. Getting in the face. That was the play that uh, Coldwater tried to run in the first half that Cruz tipped and landed in the hands of Bauchelman to tie this game up. They have a guy open in the flat, but they can't get there because everybody's in the face of the quarterback, Blockberger. Second and ten coming up now for the Cavs. Blockberger looking to throw. Can't find anything. He'll take off and run. He's going to have enough yardage where he will get the Swat Welding first down as he's going to be brought down at the 31. Uh, you remember that 2002 Ohio State team with Craig Krenzel, right? I do. Yeah, very reminiscent, right? Not a flashy runner, not a guy that is going to outrun people, but he just does enough like Craig Krenzel did in 2002. You know, how many times has he moved around in the pocket to get himself free like Craig Krenzel? That time a little quarterback run by, like Craig Krenzel. Very Krenzel-esque for Coldwater. Beat Purdue 14-9. Oh, holy Buckeye. He beat fourth down and one. Pull up some of the scores from that team. Looks a little bit like this year's Buckeye offense. There it is. Blockberger trying to get his receiver to go deep downfield. That one's going to be incomplete. Is waiting, waiting, waiting for Braylon Harlemer. Yeah, that was the hitch and go that we had talked about. Yeah, but unfortunately for Coldwater, some leakage up front. I think it was Navarre, number 70, applying the pressure. They had another half a second. That was going to be a touchdown. Second and 10 now coming up for Coldwater. It looks a little cold out there. Yeah, what's going on over there where they have to have Johnny Law hanging out by him, right? Is that is that Taylor Swift over there? Protecting the WOSN banner being hung up out there. Look at that. They got a whole bunch of banners. Right it must be. Yeah. Now we're going to have... A Northwest State Community College timeout. Coldwater wants to talk about a few things. The play clock running down as well. So timeouts tonight brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Discover Ohio's number one community college, Northwest State, today. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. Now, normally I would say you can't waste timeouts in the first half, but you can in the second. But I'm not going to say this is a waste timeout because... You are not in sorts offensively, so go ahead and call one because this is a huge moment in this football game, Randy. You just get the feeling that if Coldwater can't get a first down here and they punt the football, this Liberty Center offense is primed to keep rolling. They're going to have to answer a score if you're you, Coldwater. You might find yourself down two scores with about five minutes left if you give this away. So what a good one we've had here. Looking forward to the final couple of weeks of the high school football regular season. There's a lot of schools that are still playing that are hoping that their basketball season doesn't start for a while. The Liberty Center's already announced that their uh, scheduled season opener with Perrysburg has been pushed back. Another Henry County team, Patrick Henry, looking to do the same thing. Blockberger looking to throw. He's going to come middle of the field. His receiver's open but slips. Tough break for Coldwater. Well, it's a theme that we have seen throughout the night. Guys kind of slipping when they're trying to settle down. Harlemer is all by himself. Unfortunate for Coldwater because that would have been a big play. Nobody in a black jersey was in, within 10 yards of him. Third and ten coming up here. Can tell you the Valley View leads Waynesville at the half. 21-10. Winner of this one. Get the winner of that one next Friday in Sydney. Liberty Center has been able to get pressure with rushing three. Bring it four this time. Blockberger has to roll to that far side. Being chased by DeFar. Just shovels it out of bounds. And they're waiting for it. No, they're going to say the knee was down, I believe. 
Yeah, it's a really good call by the official. And Blackburger tries to leave the pocket because the pressure up the middle. And Barry does everything he can against Navarre. Navarre just keeps working at it. He is down when he slings it out of bounds. Tries to get it back for the six. That's going to be a sack for Navarre. Big moment in this football game. It's also the final play of our uh, third quarter. Coldwater will be opening up our uh, fourth on fourth down, and we'll see what happens when we return here on WOSF. Fourteen yeah. seven, Liberty Center lead over Coldwater as we get set for our fourth and final quarter. Sack is a loss of eight, so it looks like our final play of this fourth quarter is going to be a punt. Like you said, this kind of feels huge because we saw Liberty Center take six and a half minutes to score. They do it again. They could just about put this one away. This one in the air. Moeller's not going to get a chance to field this one as it does take... Cold water roll away from him. Hits the hash at the far side. Rolls near that sideline where it's going to be down to 37. Uh, if you're Mark Bruns, the defensive coordinator over at Cold Water, you better call your best series right now defensively. Channel your inner buddy Ryan. Get some guys to stop that run game for Liberty Center. And if you're Casey Bowler, head coach and play caller at Liberty Center, don't talk yourself into play action or throwing the ball. Run like you did last series because Coldwater could not stop you. Tigers come out. They'll flip their formation now. They'll go tight to that near side. Run's going to come that way. Now cutting up field is Cruz, I believe. He'll get out across the 40. Yeah, tremendous job. I'm sorry, it was Waylon Rex. I think it's number 22. It is Jack Ebbing that is going to play underneath it, navigate, and then he's going to get some help on the tackle by Cody Defwig. Over 300 tackles by that uh, trio in the middle for Coldwater. Pickup of a four on the play is going to bring up second and six. Kim Stutz with the give. And to the outside, here's Brents again. Well, she's going to stop him up before he reaches midfield and picks up slot welding first down. Now look at the job right there. On the perimeter, letting the bar come around because Bockelman and then Bainfeld just cave it in. Boy, you block down and pull around. He'll pin and pull. Effective for Liberty Center. Big one nine there. Gets him to midfield. It's the first down. Which is brought to you by the Swanton Welding Company. Providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at SwantonWeld.com. Back to the ground. Third play in a row for Wentz. He's going to get about five more. <laughs> Waylon Renz with the power straight ahead. <laughs> Just getting up to the line of scrimmage, snapping, and allowing your guys to come off the football. Good job by Landon Amsus, a quarterback. You know, I talk every week. Don't make the big guys wait, right? Get up there, say hut, <laughs> and let's go. That's what Liberty Center is doing. Tigers driving already. Ten minutes left to go in this one. Their scoreboard tonight brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Stutz with conversation with his running back to make sure everyone's set here for second and five. Quick pitch to go to Cruz, able to cut upfield. It looked like he was. It got stretched out, but it still looks like Trip Cruz will have enough for another swap welding first down. Now as Renz got them free on the perimeter. You're going to see it right there, just enough of the block on the edge. He's going to seal it against Layfield. Allows his running back to get outside. Uh, the edge blocking for Liberty Center has been outstanding in the second half. Picks up six more. And it's a first down to the Coldwater 39. Tigers already up a touchdown looking for more under nine and a half minutes left to play. Stutz will give to the first man through. That is going to be Waylon Rents. 
Rents will get another good gain as he's going to get inside the 35. Now look at all the white jerseys that have to be pulled up off the ground. That's because uh, the black jerseys are doing a good job of coming off the football. A lot of Peter Roll blocks delivered by the offensive line for Liberty Center. Pick up a five there. And again, we want to tell you that the premier sponsor for the Coldwater Cavs tonight is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. Second and five coming up for the Tigers. Nothing fancy like Miles said. It's just straight ahead power football. It's been successful and more as Rents is going to have himself another swat welding first down. Uh, this is just checking your soul. We're going to run right at you, and you're not going to be able to stop it. It is demoralizing to a defense when it's nothing but a dive up the middle, testing your mental t intestinal fortitude, running right at you. A game of 15 against Liberty Center inside the Coldwater Lumber Red Zone. Coldwater Lumber providing professional and reliable construction services with an experienced staff eager to assist you with your next project. First down from the 19. Cruz is going to get it to the outside. And it's going to take two defenders to bring him down. He's finally, Braylon Harlemert able to get him at about the 11. Yeah, it's a good thing Harlemer does get him down to the ground or else it's going to be another touchdown. You remember in the first half when he had all those white jerseys pursuing to the football, right? Tackling in, in, in groups. Well, take a look at it now. This is what the run game does, right? It wears you down. Only one guy now making the tackle as opposed to four or five white jerseys. Pick up of eight there brings up second and two from the eleven. Tigers in no hurry here. So much in not hurry. Play clock was down to five, and it looks like Liberty Center is going to take a Northwest State Community College timeout. So with the timeout, we'll step aside here. Liberty Center looking to add on to their one touchdown lead. 7.05 left to play. Liberty Center already up 14-7, looking for more. They've got a second and short coming up at the 11-yard line following our Northwest State Community College timeout. Tigers, if they're able to stick this one in, partner, it almost salted away. They yeah, got away with it when they broke the huddle with 12. Officials allowed the guy to get to the sideline. Rents off that right side, comes crashing down at about the six, it looks like. A good kick out by Cruz. That's going to allow the lineman to get around and lead the way. That's Brogan, number 63, doing a good job. And with the fundamentals of the offensive line for Liberty Center, every single one can block at the point of attack. Every single one can block on the move. They're like an individual carbon copy of each other. Mark this at the 7 one to their instant replays tonight. Brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lima Wapak Devils St. Mary's call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken for home style happens here. First and goal from the seven yard line. Rents. I'm just going to push his plug. Oh, he knew he had a touchdown taken away from him. It's going to be a false start against Liberty Center. So I'll back him up to the 12. Boy, let's see if this is a big moment. The only way they've been stopped here in the second half is when they have made mistakes. And now you're, you're five yards deeper, and as you said, that looked like it was a play that was going to score and maybe seal this game. Coldwater had a blitz dialed up on the last play. Let's see if they bring it again. First and goal now from outside the 10. Go right back to Renz. He's going to run into that blitz, and he's going to be pushed back as he gets to the line of scrimmage. We'll see where this gets marked at. Really good job at the point of attack. Just sealing it or pushing it back inside. As Hamilton, Austin Hamilton. Remember, Hamilton in the first half had a touchdown-saving tackle on Cruz. 
He's played some pretty good football, and unfortunately, Rents is down for Liberty Center. And he did have a, a big hit applied there, as they're going to mark him at a, the 11. So you see the helmet off. A problem with the hip if he took one and took a shot to the side. So when they take a look at the injured player, we'll step aside here in WOSN. Oh, with a little bit of help, Waylon Rents, as you see there, being uh, helped back to his uh, bench. As you can tell, not able to put any weights on that, uh, looks like, ankle. Yeah, he's clearly in some pain. Hopefully Se he gets back. Second goal coming up here for Liberty Center now. From the 11, as they're going to go with Cruz and Cruz in the backfield. Mm -hmm. Cold water mm -hmm. ready for that one. And now, see, a little slow to get up after landing on the football was Trent and Cruz. As Leifeld again making a play in the backfield. And third down now. Now, Liberty Center is in field goal range. And Ian Rosebrook is a fantastic kicker. You know, two scores, absolutely, a two-score lead, absolutely huge. And looking at third and goal now from the 14. This started with first and goal at the seven, but a penalty and a couple of negative plays have backed up the Tigers. Third down, keeping this one on the ground. Because Liberty Center doesn't want to try to do anything fancy here as they go. I love the call, though. Inside trap, if it pops, you, you might get a first down. If not, you put the ball back in the middle of the field. Uh, that's where all kickers love to kick the football. A good shot of Rents getting uh, looked at. Second big weapon that has been out of the game with an ankle injury today. Game of one on the last play, so fourth and goal from the 13. As Miles had predicted, here comes Ian Rosebrook to attempt what will be a, looks like a 30-yard field goal. Amstutz the holder, kick is on its way, the field goal is up, and the field goal is good. So Liberty Center is able to add on to their lead. Tigers now up 10 with 4.11 to play, and we'll take a break here in WOSF. The 30-yard field goal is good out of uh, Ian Rosebrook. So now 17-7, Liberty Center in front of a cold water on our Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Tigers two scores up, trying to get to that round that they advanced to last year in the state semifinal. They were knocked out against South Range. South Range. And last we had that uh, Clyde. Yeah. Reverse action on the return. Carla Mert had to get that out. You shook your head no. Was I wrong? Yeah, I thought it was an owl Oh, flag on the on the field. Yeah, I thought we went out to South Range last year. We didn't go to South Range. We were on that side of the state, though. <laughs> you went to South Range. I did, yeah. Where did we have that one? With a personal foul at the end of the return. I didn't really see it, did you? I did not. No, it was at Clyde last year. Because remember, they had the, the big jet in the that's end right, zone. That's right, that's right. So when you've been to as many stadiums as I have, they all run together. Yeah, 55 this 50, year. Yeah. No, not 55 in one year. <laughs> in one year. Yeah. Randy just drives around. <laughs> <laughs> just, not necessarily a football game going on. I just want to stop and look at a football field. Well, big uh, penalty for Coldwater. they got to get a lot of yards quickly down two scores. And they're going to skip from their own 37. And they'll get to about the 40 here. Okay, moving block, Berger. To get him some space to throw the football. But everybody for Liberty Center is going to let short passes be caught and then come up and rally up and hit them. Cavs have no other. Can't do anything but speed up. That's what I'm trying to say. And that was going to be incomplete if they go quickly. Good job by Zyder, number 33 for Liberty Center. 
Not letting a quarterback get free outside the pocket until late allows his defensive backs to shrink the field. The third and fourth coming up here for Coldwater from the uh, 44. Need 10 points and they're running out of time to get it here with 3.35 to go. This Liberty Center crowd is just getting as loud as possible, making it tough for Coldwater. Now the fake to Harlem Raiders one middle of the field. That one's going to be incomplete. They're trying to set something up for Mason Welsh. We're going to take a look at the Lee's famous rescue chicken replay. Now watch number five in black. Play in the middle. He recognizes the screen. He's going to knife through it. Unfortunately for him, though, he forgets to eyeball the football. That hits him right in the face mask. That would have been a game under had he picked that off. Fourth down coming up here for Coldwater. This feels very much like fourth in the ball game. Blockberger rolling out under pressure, fires, and that one is incomplete. Welsh unable to hang on to it, and Liberty Center is going to take over on downs. Now watch 24, top of your screen, Colton Chambers, he's going to play the flat. Recognize what they're trying to do, give the left hand involved as Blockberger just ran out of time. Pressure right in his face, had to throw it before he wanted it. Liberty Center is going to get this one with 3.24 left. Coldwater does have, I believe, two of their timeouts remaining. Tigers are going to have a short field starting with Coldwater 44. And Liberty Center, just hold on to the football. You're going to win this football game. See the run coming. Straight ahead goes Liberty Center as they turn to Colton Cruz. Yeah, run dive right up the middle with Cruz. Linebackers are going to run. Right by it, another tremendous block <laughs> delivered <laughs> by that offensive line. Check out the work of Brady Giski, number 55, got himself a pancake. Second down coming up here for the Tigers. Unlike Coldwater in their possession are in no hurry. Final 240 can't come fast enough for the Tigers. Amstutz again, give to that first man through. It's gonna be Trenton Cruz, that pile still moves forward. He's gonna be about a yard shy of the first down. He's a Deppwig, number 25, reaching in there, trying to get that football out. Good job by the other white jerseys, holding up the runner, letting him have an opportunity to get it out. We're going to have a timeout by Coldwater. Yeah, with third down upcoming, they're going to take one. So it is a Northwest State Community College timeout. Discover Ohio's number one community college, Northwest State, today. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. So they're actually going to mark this back close into the 36. So originally it looked like it was going to be a third and one, but it's going to be closer to a third and two. Don't know if that makes a huge difference if you're Liberty Center. I don't think it changes the play. No, if, if they don't pick it up here on third down and it, it's fourth and short, I mean, where the ball is at on the football field, the Liberty Center goes for it on fourth down. Huge effort out of this Liberty Center team in the second half. Scuffled through the first half, got a big uh, defensive score, and a batted ball, landed Bachelman able to take it into the end zone to score really sparked this Tiger team now a couple of minutes away from heading back to the final four. It kind of woke them up, right? It did. It was all cold water early, converting this about every third down that they saw, and then all of a sudden, Trenton Cruz's left hand changed the complexion of this football game. Power eye here out of Liberty Center. It's going to be the third man through. It's going to be Colton Cruz, and on second effort, he's going to get the Swat and Welding first down. Yeah, another pancake block that time delivered by Zane Zider. And there it is right there. We saw it at practice. 
And they love to do it. It depends where you're at. It's the Chicago eye. It's the power eye. It's the smokestack eye. But at Liberty Center, they call it the game clincher. Pick up a four there as Coldwater is going to use its final Northwest State Community College timeout. So with the timeout on the field, we'll take a break as well. Here's Liberty Center tries to salt this one away. 219 left to play as Coldwater uses uh, its final timeout. Cavs trying to uh, save as much time as they can for a uh, chance they have to get back into this one. 17-7, Liberty Center with the lead. Fresh set of downs at the 32-yard line. Going back to that power eye. It's Colton Cruz once again as that pile will move inside the 30 down to about the 26. So Liberty Center will have to run about three more plays here. Looks like we're going to see some of the regulars now maybe getting substituted out as we see Zach Weaver, senior tight end, making his way out onto the field. Colton Chambers out there as well as the Tigers realize with the first down could put this one away so they're going to get into victory formation Zam Stutz is going to back up he'll take a few seconds off and take the knee back up to the 30 as it looks like Waylon Rents had to uh, get some crutches so hopefully nothing too serious they'll Take a look at him as uh, Tigers will have to have just about everyone available as they look forward to their state semifinal matchup. Update everyone on what else is going on as trying to get an opponent. As 9.57 to play, Wayneville, Waynesville, excuse me, with a 24 21 lead, so the only thing we do know. So the officials on huh? the clock here. Third down, minute 21, and put some time back on the clock. So we do know that uh, game will be played in Sydney next Friday night. Liberty Center fans do know they will keep playing. Now the officials are going to hold this up yet again. So having some trouble either starting the play clock early, starting the game clock. Either way, officials are going to get this one ready to go. Begin to wind the clock once again. So they put it back to a minute 20, set the play clock for what they needed. Now we're ready to go with third down. Liberty Center just trying to run a few more seconds off the clock here. Trying to time this out to get it under 40 on the game clock so they only have to take one more snap. A run down. Amstutz again under center. Takes his knee. The officials trying to get this one set. Trying to hold off as long as they can. They finally time it up. Where it's going to be right on. So Liberty Center can let this run off without another penalty. Liberty Center's offense stay out there. Might have to, looks like they might snap it with a second, just run one more play here. Just trying to avoid what would be a penalty. Now 
Clock does run off. The officials are going to hold this up. And it looks like that is going to do it. The officials looking for the football. Looks like Liberty Center, and there'll be a Liberty ball, so they will get that back to their sideline. But it's, uh, we do have a final, and we also have a regional champion, and it's the Liberty Center Tigers as they claim the win over Coldwater tonight, 17 to seven. We're going to take a timeout, and when we come back, we'll head down to the field as our Miles Holiday's down there, and he's going to get a word or two with our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner when we return. Big win tonight for the Liberty Center Tigers. They've reached the state final four in football as uh, they have a pretty impressive win over Coldwater tonight, 17 to seven. Leading the way was our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner, Landon Bockelman. Not only the big blocker in offense, but the first touchdown scorer for the Tigers as well. He is the uh, big looking guy, scary looking dude down on the field with our Miles Holiday. Dynamic dude. And then it falls in your hands. You just run ends up walking. Is that one fall in your hands? Uh, it was pretty exciting. I knew that I had to, I had to show up once I had that ball and do something. Uh, Chris, the crit train cruise, that would have never happened if it wasn't him working his butt off. Yeah, it's a big moment in the second half. You guys came out, kind of went back to what you guys do best, run it right down their throat. What was the conversation at halftime about the run game? Uh, basically, we just need to do our jobs and come out and play the center football because that was not us that first half. So we knew that we just had to step everything up. This went in the region. What's it going to take from here for you guys to, to hoist that state, tra state trophy, state title trophy at the end of the year? Uh, just go week by week, prepare to be the best team in the state. So, congratulations, Game Fry. You guys go and enjoy, enjoy it over the weekend. Yeah, he was absolutely dynamic here tonight. Yeah, absolutely said the uh, big touchdown on the uh, deflection kind of got the Tigers going, spinning their wheels early on. They were able to set the tone with him both offensively and defensively, ends up scoring. Uh, again, the uh, first touchdown leading the way for Liberty Center as they end up getting the win tonight over Coldwater, 17-7. to You see the uh, Tigers there. The uh, alma mater with their students section like they do after every game. It'll be a uh, fun trip back uh, north for the uh, Tiger squad as they've come to Lima and gotten the win over Coldwater. So we want to thank everyone for making our night possible here in Lima. It starts with uh, John Zell, tournament manager here at uh, uh, Spartan Stadium. Can't thank Curtis and John for the work they did. It got a little cold out there as the sun went down tonight, but uh, great job behind the scenes of the cameras. And, of course, our uh, Ken Reeker manages to uh, make all of this look good with uh, all the work he does as our role of a producer and director. So 17-7, Liberty Center gets the win over Coldwater. They're on to the state Final Four for my partner, Miles Holiday, and our entire WOSN crew, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.